Hi everyone, I'm Linda and welcome to the KX Country Clubhouse. My special guest today is Jess Moskaluk. Welcome, Jess. Hey, how's it going? It's great. Now, how cold is it in your neck of the woods? You're in Saskatchewan? Yeah, it's too cold here. That's how cold. It's like, I, I actually don't know what the temperature is right now, but it's been, this is the coldest it's been all winter. It got down to like minus, in, in the minus 40s, at least. It was, it's cold, too cold. <laughs> so when they say don't go out, you don't want to go out anyway. <laughs> oh yeah, you listen. I went and got groceries the other day and just from the act of putting my groceries into my car froze my hands and took me like five minutes so it's wow we're, we're stocked Crazy. up now I'm not going out there <laughs> okay well it's nice and toasty in here and uh, first of all I want to say congratulations on your first number one song for country girls thank you so much thank you guys for helping us get there means the world that that was absolutely amazing and that song along with uh well that's one of 11 tracks that's going to be on your brand new album the demos yes super excited now that's coming out on february the 19th yep and you know what i want to talk, talk about map dot for a moment because when i first heard the song uh well when i saw the title i went map dot i go isn't that like the little dot when you're looking up directions and I didn't really know what the concept of the song was going to be about until I really listened and this song has a special spot in your heart doesn't it yeah this song was basically written as a love song to my community um, especially when I very first started in this career I was getting so many people say, oh, well, you're going to have to move to Nashville if you want to be successful, or you're going to at least have to move to Toronto or Vancouver or Calgary or wherever. You can't live in that small town. And I never agreed with that. I really think that we're so far beyond that. And I should just be able to live where I want and where I'm happy. And um, I mean, I'm doing okay. I'm pretty happy. I'm happy living here. And I'm so happy with the way that my career has, has shaped itself. And uh, so I think that it was really important for me to be like, I think they just don't get it. I don't think mm -hmm. that people understand what I have and why I'm so thankful to live where I do. Well, I'm glad you're doing what you're doing because you got to follow your heart, right? Absolutely. Tell us uh, a little bit about, you met Australian country star, Travis Collins, and he is actually on your album. Yes, and I'm so thankful that he's on my album. I met Travis back in 2019. Um, I was about to go to Australia for my very first Australian shows, but I needed a band over there, which I did not have. So um, Travis was kind enough. We got, Travis and I got connected through Phil Barton, who is a mutual friend and co-writer of ours. And he said, you know, I think Travis would let you um, play with his band. And of course he agreed. And, and um, we ended up playing some shows together, some of the same shows. And uh, I was completely mesmerized and blown away by his voice. It has this crazy unique quality where it's husky and smoky and raspy, but so powerful, sort of like Stapleton has that thing. So I was like, yeah, I know. I was like, I have to sing with this guy. But neither of us knew how soon that was actually going to take place. So I politely begged him to be on my album and he obliged and completely took this song to a whole new level. It was never really written to be a duet specifically, um, but it's so much better as a duet and the song would not be the same if it wasn't for Trav. So you were there and he was in Australia and then the magic happened? Yeah, actually, I'm trying to think. I've been so fortunate to do many duets over my career, and I actually don't think that I've ever done a duet where the person and I are in the studio at the same time. So it really kind of didn't matter that he was in Australia. It, it As long as he got us, you know, his vocals, it was all good. So like you and many other artists during this past year of the pandemic, it looks like you were concentrating on your music because you know there's a few other things that we could be doing uh like being out on the road but we can't so um was it an opportunity for you to uh, dig deeper into your songwriting skills no 
Um, no. Actually, no, not at all. It's kind of been the exact opposite for me. I'm a really collaborative person and I feel like I work best when I can sit and be inspired with and by other people, but that's something that you can't do if you're by yourself. So I've really been the total opposite. I have written a handful of times and it's not the same. I, it's such a bummer to say that, but the truth is that it's just, this is not a time in my life where writing is something that's really working very well. So um, on the positive side, there have been a lot of other things in my career that I've been wanting to do, but never really had the time or the ability really to do that, such as the project that I've been working on the last couple months, I guess, handpicked by Jess. That's been great, which is super exciting. Um, and honestly, the other positive of me not writing a ton this year is that I have so many songs that actually we should be releasing. And I just keep, you know, normally I just keep writing and then we're like, okay, well, these ones are newer, so we should put these ones out. If it wasn't for the pandemic, um, the demos probably wouldn't be released. And if the demos wasn't released, you probably wouldn't hear any of these songs. So it's kind of actually worked out to be a good thing. Okay, so there was a silver lining after all. <laughs> yes, of course, always. <laughs> okay, so for most of us, we have either done COVID cooking or COVID baking. Uh, have you done any of that? Uh, I mean, or no. You've been doing all the eating. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I haven't. Honestly, uh, in the very beginning of it all, it was, it, it was kind of funny because people are like, what are you doing with your spare time? But so many people were asking us what we were doing with our spare time that we ended up doing interviews <laughs> in our spare time. <laughs> so um, I haven't had a ton of spare time, but uh, in the very beginning, I had a little bit and I, I wallpapered a few rooms but other than that it's really just been I've been filling up my spare time with other work things so I'm kind of I'm kind of boring I'm definitely a workaholic and there hasn't been a lot of like exciting activities other than just new and exciting projects in terms of my career that I've been working on so boring okay. yeah <laughs> um but no Netflix have you been watching anything yeah but like I am the kind of person that I watch TV sort of like at the end of the day to wind down. So like I'll crawl into bed and watch like an episode of something. So we've, I've done that, but not like as a hobby. <laughs> okay. But have you watched Bridgerton? Yes, I did. Was it not have amazing? You? Yes. So good. Yeah. Okay. If you haven't yeah. watched Firefly Lane, you got to watch that. Oh, really? I've heard about that. You're not the first person to tell me that, which means that you're probably very right. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. I just finished it last week. <laughs> Ooh, I'll have to, I'll have to get started on that. Oh, you know what I wanted to bring up too was Yellowstone because we just finished that this past weekend. And I oh, know yeah. a lot of country so, artists have been watching that. Yeah, totally. It's so funny because I haven't been watching that, but this is not a show like it's already on its third season and it just feels like now everybody's getting into it but like a year yeah. or two ago clay and i watched it like that would be our show that we'd watch like on rainy days if we were camping in the summer so i've seen the first season but i haven't seen and i might have seen the second season but i ha definitely haven't seen the third so we uh yeah, well, the, that's the also added to the the third season is a big wow so <laughs> watch Ooh, out <laughs> i hope it's a good wow <laughs> yeah well hmm, i don't know <laughs> I no guess spoilers to watch it and see. yeah exactly <laughs> And speaking of Clay, and how are things on, on the married life of, of Jess? <laughs> Good. They've never been better. This is like Clay, it, it'll be uh, nine years in May that we've been together. And this is wow. the most time by far that we've ever had the opportunity to spend together. So it kind of feels like now we can do the newlywed thing like two and a half years later. So um, mm -hmm. things are really good. Loving spending this time with him and at home. It's been uh it's, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, how are you guys going to do that? You're not used to that. And I was like, actually, it's been fantastic. It's been, so, he's been so great. That's but don't great. tell him I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the better cook in the kitchen? Me. Yeah, he are doesn't you? do. He, he's really great at um, barbecuing and he's got like a trigger and smoker and stuff that he really loves. So he's awesome at that. But 
we wouldn't have anything else to eat if like it would just be meat if he was cooking I think so <laughs> okay I have to ask because I saw you on social media the other day and I think you said you were wearing fuzzy slippers during your in and she is <laughs> yeah great <laughs> yeah, I gotta gotta do it. I'm I'm dressed. I even put real pants on for you guys today. But sometimes I'm like, I can get away with sweatpants today, right? But I had to do the slippers. It's a ritual now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So Jess, what do you miss the most? Per well, two things, and they both are kind of the same thing. But the thing that I miss the most is obviously performing. Um, that's what I fell in love with that's why I got into this career and uh, that's what keeps me in this career is performing live so it's kind of a bummer to not do that but the second thing that goes hand in hand with that is I miss my band so much those mm -hmm. people we call them our road family because they're truly a family and you see them more than you see your own family a lot of the time so um, I miss them a lot we had like a zoom Christmas party and we're like, oh, we'll just stop on and say hi and have a drink, you know, catch up. We were on there for like four or five hours um, just talking. So it's, it's been really hard. I haven't seen my drummer in over a year or my bass player in over a year. The other boys I've run into and um, we've had a few things that we could do, but like it's, it's been too long. And I'm, I'm really missing some, some of the people in my life that I yes. only see on the road. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed that things will change sooner than later. Yes. And the demos is coming out on February the 19th. We're uh, all pretty excited to hear some new music from Jess Moskaluk. It's about time. I cannot wait. I hope you guys love these songs as much as I do. It feels like a bit of a relief to release these because it always felt like these songs deserved a home and they never quite got it for whatever reason and they do now so I hope you love them well you've always been one of my favorites so I can't wait and uh thanks for joining us today stay safe you guys and too say hi to everyone there for me you're one of my favorites as well. so give everyone a big hug if you're allowed to hug people and if you're not just wave at them or something tell them I said hi Will do. <laughs> awesome. Thanks right. so much, Linda. Yeah.